Hey guys and gals, now we're here from Drake Wing Gaming, and something you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Shelter. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. And y'all, we're doing movie night uh, Thursday, October 5th at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Central Time. Uh, we're going to be streaming VHS, one of my favorite horror movies, but... Yeah, why don't you all drop on by and join? It's as little as $5, and you'll get permanent access. You get a voice chat with me and the voice chat with me and the uh, other people who are in the Discord and just have a great old spooky time. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's a go. All right. Is that a piece of hair on my screen? No, it is not. That's okay. All right. Now, is it good yet? No, Luke, not yet. What about now? Not yet, Luke. Okay, but now it looks cooked. It's changed color and everything. For the hundredth time, no, not yet. Patience. It's already been almost half an hour. I don't want to burn it. We've been working so hard on it. But just keep stirring. I'm keeping an eye on your pot, so I'll tell you when it's ready. Relax, Luke. There's still some liquid left. You'll notice clearly once all the liquid evaporates and it actually starts to fry in the remaining oil instead of cooking in that meat juice soup. We'll get less steam, and the sound will clearly change into a sharp tone. Very much like you fry an egg in a pan, or... Like now? No, Luke, not yet. Oh, wait, actually, yes, like this. This is it. Hm. Now that all the liquid has evaporated and only, and only the meat and oil remain, let it fry for a few more minutes. It is already deeply cooked, but we want to get it golden brown with a hint of crispiness. Keep stirring. We will be adding our butter simmered vegetable mix soon. You can lower the heat to a medium for now. Roger. I lower the heat under the pot and keep stirring the meat vigorously, waiting sure to not let it stick to the bottom of the so or the sides. Luckily, we have high-quality pots and nothing sticks to them. The merchant at Morseberg swore that they were cast out of liquid magma from a live volcano. I don't know how much truth there is in that. Merchants are well known for coloring up their stories of their goods to a ridiculous degree. The pots should do their job, though. The meat, the meat finally starts to smell really good. The meat finally starts to smell really good. Yes, this is when everything finally starts to come together. Let us add our vegetables now, Luke. Got it. I'm ready. And in unison, we dump our buttery onion, garlic, carrot, celery mix into our respective pots and stir them along with our meat. The combined scent is all, of all those ingredients rises out of our pots and makes us let makes us both let out of satisfied groans. Just like he said, it's all starting to come together now. It's unbelievable that something I made can smell so good. I feel like a really fancy pan chef now. Obviously, I've been telling you, you can learn anything you put your mind to. And we have not even gotten to the fancy pants part of the recipe yet. Keep stirring the pot for a few more minutes. Let the flavors mix. And then we'll be adding the wine. Man, that's fancy. I keep working with my spoon relentlessly and reach out with my free hand for the jug full of red wine that we had prepared beforehand. It smells nice and fruity. I like wine. Maybe I could have a little sip. And Burry tastes his ingredients all the time before adding, so why wouldn't Why shouldn't I? I bring the jug to my lips and tilt it so I can have a taste, but at the same time making sure to not neglect stirring the pot with the spoon in my other hand. I can multitask. Hmm, yeah, that's good wine. It's hard for me to tell if it was brewed here at Shelter or imported. I need to ask Burry. We managed to set up a few little breweries, but some of the alcohol still comes from Morseberg. We have a few hobbyist brewers around at Shelter, but no dedicated specialists. I wonder how much does Burry know about brewing alcohol and if he could teach me someday. Gah! I hiss as my forearm brushes against the hot edge of the pot. The jug's still full, still by my lips, still by my lips at the time. A bit of a red wine splashes out as I jerk my arm. It splatters over my mouth and drips on the floor between my feet. Damn it! Now I have to go grab a rag and rag to wipe myself off on the floor. I should be about ready to add the wine now. Increase the heat back to maximum and Luke, why are you wet with wine? I was trying to take a sip. Never mind. You'll have a moment to clean yourself. So you'll have a moment to clean yourself soon. For now, pour the wine into the pot, please. Now, okay. And remember, one thing at a time. You can let go of your spoon for now. I nod and follow his instructions. I increase the heat under the pot from medium back to maximum and bring the jug of wine over the meaty mix. I pour in a little wine and get hit with a wave of aromas. It's like no water time. Hmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Delicious. Whoa, that's good. 
<laughs> I told you. Still, I see you are being too careful with the wine. Pour in more. Nearly to the level to cover the meat. That much? Are you sure? That's a lot of wine. Isn't it all going to taste like booze? <laughs> no, Luke. Do not worry. We're going to give it some time to evaporate in high heat. All the alcohol will go away and leave only the color and flavor. It will fit into a fl into our flavor palette very nicely. Aren't you going to, to pour some wine into yours? Oh, well... Barry scratches the side of his chin in embarrassment. We're nearly out of wine. I was going to buy more and more's book tomorrow. Oh, so it's imported? Yes, but do not worry. Me and the guys will bring a lot tomorrow. For today, please use as much as you need and I will take the rest. Go ahead and start pouring. I will let you know when it is enough. I feel very guilty about chugging that wine now. And Barry doesn't seem to mind, though. He looks at the jug in my hands and waits for me. I start pouring it into the mix. More and more of the crimson booze spills into the pot, and Burry just keeps observing without a word. I keep pouring it out, then... By the time he asks me to stop, almost all the meat is covered in wine and the jug is nearly empty. The single wave of aroma of evaporating alcohol turns into a barrage of overwhelming scents. It completely overshadows the fragrance of the vegetables and the meat. Wow, that sure is something. Yes, I love this phase. Please pass me the jug and get your face closer to the pot. Take a deeper breath of the steam. You'll love it, too. He takes the jug with the wine leftovers and I follow his advice. I get my face over the wine simmering mixture and take a breath of steam. Ah! The moment I do, I get completely overwhelmed by the sharp stench of alcohol invading my nostrils. I choke and stumble back blindly, with Burry laughing hardly by my side. And then I suddenly feel my whole body rapidly falling backwards as my foot slips over the wine I spilled earlier. Oh! Got you! I find my landing soft and secure, wrapped in one of Burry's massive arms. He smiles cheerfully, with his snout only inches away from my face. Despite usually being prone to over overreacting to hazards, right now he looks he looks overjoyed. He must be excited. He can sometimes act carefree like that like that when he's in a particularly good mood. How was it? Did you like it? Uh, I mean, wow. Strong, right? It really clears up your nose. Um, I mean, you know, yeah, you're right. Took me by surprise, but it actually feels nice in the afterglow. And I actually like this scent. It was so rich, I feel like I'd get drunk with the vapors alone. <laughs> I was looking forward to your reaction to that. I'm going to share all those strong, wonderful scents with you. That is one of the beauties of cooking to me. Burry helps me to my feet and pats my back, and he glances into the jug with leftover wine. Sorry for drinking and spilling the wine. Now you don't have enough for your own sauce. Ha! <laughs> Do not let it weigh on your conscience, Luke. We would have not had nearly enough for any amount of meat regardless. Not that it was necessary in the first place. Cheers, Luke, for your first skies ablaze. Hurry brings the jug up to his mouth and chugs down the last of the wine with a couple big gulps. That's unexpected. Burry rarely drinks, definitely never at work. Then again, we technically aren't at work anymore. It's just a casual hangout, and he's clearly having fun. That makes me happy, too. So you're saying the wine isn't necessary? Indeed it is not. The simplified recipe I prepared for you lacked wine, butter, some of the vegetables, and yet I do not consider that version much inferior. There are many ways to approach this recipe. This one is simply my personal favorite. It takes a few more steps and ingredients, but I know you will appreciate that extra effort. Now, Luke, we're about to reach the final steps of your quest. Really? Yes. Your journey might have been long and challenging, with many wounds suffered as a reminder of your trials. Thank you. One time. I don't know why I don't have more save files. I only get three? That's not a lot. Need more. More! All right. But keep comfort in the fact that your sacrifice is not going to be for naught. Soon you shall taste victory. The spoils of divine smells and flavors are within your reach, Luke. Hooray! Wipe the forest so you don't slip again. I will bring mashed potato, mashed tomatoes. The next steps are very straightforward. Once the pot stops smelling of booze, we dump mashed potatoes into our pots to be, ba to be the base for the whole sauce. And some more salt, much more black pepper, a nice big sprinkle of oregano, and a much more and a much more careful one of basil. You can allow yourself to be fairly generous with oregano and black pepper, but be very mindful to not overdo it with basil or salt. Those can overpower and unbalance the composition. Remember, Luke, you can always add more salt and spices into the dish if it is lacking. It is impossible to take them out if you overdo it, though. Stir it, give it a minute for the spices to release the flavor, and then taste it. I do as Burry tells me. 
I stir the spices into the sauce, give it a moment, and grab a tablespoon to make it uh, take a sample of the sauce. Even before I taste the sauce, I can already tell from the sense alone that it's... It's perfect! I nearly shout in happiness, and I look at Burry. A curious smile curls at his muzzle. Burry! Burry, it's delicious, meaty, and spicy, and a little sweet, and... May I have a taste? Of course, here! In my excitement, I don't even wipe my teaspoon before I take another sample of it and present it to him. I catch him in an awkward situation where he's in the process of reaching for my pot with his own clean spoon, and I present him a sample in front of his mouth in front of his mouth to feed him. <laughs> Sorry. I linger for a moment and start to slowly move my hand back. But Burry leans in, leans his head closer and starts blowing at the sample and the spoon that I'm holding. Then he opens his mouth and eats it. For a moment, I feel a bit embarrassed about spoon-feeding Burry like that, but then I remember all the times when Burry fed me whenever I was bedridden. This isn't weird for us. Hmm. Murray nods and smiles. His brows furrow slightly. He raises his finger as if to say some kind, of, as if to say some kind of correction. But he stops, lingers for a moment, and sighs. Yes, Luke. It's perfect. Wonderful job. Really? Indeed. The meat and vegetables are well cooked. The spices are not overpowering. It is absolutely delicious. It's going to go great with the noodles. Splendid, Luke. I expected nothing less of you. Burry puts his big, clawed hand on my head and pets it, with a pr big, proud smile on his beautiful, wide muzzle. I couldn't be any happier. Why does your hair feel crusty? He leans in closer and sniffs my head from up close. He's so close that I can feel his warm, pleasantly smelling breath. When did you get your hair and raw meat? Probably when you... Oh, good thing we we're going to have a bath soon. You're going to enjoy it after standing by pots for so long. I always do. Are we done, then? Are we ready to serve and dig in? Oh, no, 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 no! Well, it is true that we have reached the final step. This one is also the longest and arguably the hardest. We're gonna let it simmer on low heat. Let the sauce thicken a little. How long? Like, ten minutes? Ideally, we'd leave it for something between four, four to six hours. No way! We don't have that much time. I'm hungry! Do not worry, Luke. We're not going to stay here for long. We're not going to stay here so long. Less than one hour will be enough. We'll be using a little trick to get what we want without starving to death in the process. That shall give us time to prepare the noodles at our table. And to have a little rest. It's going to be hard to wait so long with those smells in the kitchen. Hmm? At least you're not a canine. That would never... That would, that would be even harder. Huh. Sometimes I wish I was. Hmm? Hmm? I mean, like, right now, I wish I could smell it the same way as you can. Water time. All right. Even here, I'm probably missing out so many nice details in the smells. I nervously clear my throat and look away. I slip some unnecessary words out, but I really don't want to bother Burry with my existential crisis. Stop it, Luke. Hmm. You know, you can smell like me if you want to. Uh, even if just for a brief moment. Hmm? Oh! That's right, canine mana. You probably have not done it in a while. No, it's been so peaceful for so long, there was no need to. Ugh. I am the same. Peace makes one grow rusty in regards of magic. Yet, if you wish to, if you wish it so, I will attempt to share my mana with you. I stand and think. Looking at Barry in silence, I'm nervous about his idea, because dealing with mana of other species can be straining and overwhelming, but part of me is excited. Neither me nor Burry are strangers to the interracial side of magic. We rarely use that in something so casual, though. All living beings capable of conscious thoughts produce mana throughout the course of their lives. That energy seeps out of people's bodies and takes part in the natural cycle, cultivating new life and fueling other natural phenomena. It can also be burnt to activate certain abilities. Each species has their own abilities specific to their mana type. No person can internally produce mana of an, a mana of another species, but it can be transferred between species for a brief use. That can happen in a few ways. Burry is so exceptionally skilled in controlling the flow of mana that he can pass it to me by touch. If he does, I can then burn it. There are a few steps of intensity of how much mana can be burnt. The most basic one, when used by another species, is to heighten one's senses close to the natural level of that mana's original species. For example, when the dogs burn my mana, they say that they can see and think clearer than ever, than ever for a brief moment. When I burn canine mana, I can smell better and see in dim light. In short, Burry wants to pass some of his canine mana so I can briefly smell the simmering meat sauce in as much detail as he can. 
Do you think that's wise? I haven't done that in a while. I believe so. Simply heightening one's senses is, uh, is, is not as straining as a process as your mana vision or pack mentality. Uh, those abilities take effort to master regardless of species. If you tried to reach pack mentality, it would be like how when you... Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!